There are many different ways to reach financial independence and early retirement, and the things that worked for me are not gonna work for everybody, so I wanted to show some different paths that a lot of people have actually used to be able to retire in their 20s and 30s. But no matter what path you decide to take, the first step for everybody is to get out of any high interest consumer debt if you have that, because before you can start making progress and getting closer to your goals, you need to stop digging deeper into holes that Wow, I just made a terrible rhyme. All right, well. The frugal approach. This is what possibly a lot of people think about when they think about financial independence. It's this idea of depriving yourself now so that you can reach financial independence and like kind of just saving money any way that you can. But that's not necessarily what I'm talking about here. I'm really talking about saving money on your big three, your housing, your transportation, and your food. If you can tackle all of those and save a lot of money in those areas of your life, it'll make saving money a lot easier. And then eventually you do have to take that money and start investing it whatever way uh, you want to. But this is definitely a doable approach. And this is where savings rate is super important and can really show my point here. If your savings rate is 10%, which a lot of people recommend, then it will take you 51 years to build up enough money that you can live off of that indefinitely. But if you take the more extreme approach, uh, kind of like what I did and try to save 75% of your income, you can get that number down to under seven years. And yes, you do have to make some sacrifices now, but this isn't for 50 years down the road, you'll be able to enjoy yourself. This is for seven years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, you will be able to reach financial independence and kind of do what you want to do with the rest of your life. If you're able to get that savings rate up, it makes an insane difference. Starting a business. If you look at a lot of millionaires, most of them will be entrepreneurs or own some type of business. This doesn't mean it has to be something huge, but generally it's something that you start. It takes a couple years to set up of grinding, of working nights and weekends and not really getting paid. But then eventually you can build it up into something that you can either sell and take a large profit, or you can try to automate it, hire somebody to take your place, kind of Tim Ferriss, four hour work week, the whole thing, so that you're continually making money from this business that you just kind of have to keep running it doesn't take a ton of work. Generally, if you're trying to achieve financial independence, you're gonna be a driven person, so you're not gonna to wanna to quit entirely anyways. And if that's you, this might be a great way to do it so that you'll still have something to do once you're at financial independence, but it's something that doesn't require a lot of time because you've automated it. It's a little bit of passive income, or at least it doesn't take an insane amount of your job. So ideally, this isn't something that your time is tied to. It's something like selling a product or having other people work for you or creating something once that pays you uh, multiple times during the future, like some type of digital product or YouTube videos. So don't forget to subscribe. Real estate investing. Now this is one of the main paths that I took myself and honestly, I think it is probably the fastest way to reach financial independence. For me, it took me about three years. There's a couple ways to do this. It's really gonna depend on where you're located, how much money you have, where you're starting, even like what your family situation is. For me, I did something called house hacking where I bought a multifamily with a low percentage down loan, like three, three and a half percent. Lived in one unit, rented out the other two, uh, and kind of rinsed and repeated the process three times in the past three years. And that combined with low expenses allowed me to reach uh, kind of like a lean financial independence. But that's definitely not gonna work for everybody. You can also uh, get a big single family house and rent out part of it or an in-law suite or an attached dwelling or a basement or a bedroom. You can do something more temporary where you rent a bigger place than you need and rent out some of the bedrooms. You could also just do the more common, buy a multifamily that you don't live in. It'll be more money down, but you won't have to live there. Uh, I never had much money and I, I still don't, so that's never been an option for me. And if one of these sounds interesting to you, then I would definitely recommend checking out NerdWallet. NerdWallet is a great place to compare mortgage rates. I've been using NerdWallet for a long time and it is a great and super simple way to compare mortgages, learn more about them, check out if you wanna get a 15 or a 30 year, what are the pros and cons to those, comparing different lenders and finding what's the right one for you and your situation. So they even have mortgage calculators and can hook you up with a real estate agent all on their app. There's a ton of great information on there that can answer uh, pretty much every question that I had on not only mortgages, but honestly, a lot of areas in your finances. So if that's something that interests you, you can download their app. It's free, ton of great information on there. And thank you again to NerdWallet for sponsoring this video.
growing your income. Now, this is something that I've never uh, been great at. I think it would have been helpful if I uh, actually went to school or was smart. This is just the idea of finding a high paying job and continually trying to work your way up the ladder as fast as possible, but not letting all your expenses grow along with your income. For some reason, like most of the financial independence people I have met are like engineers or do some type of data analysis. I don't, I don't know what they do. They're just smart and they make a lot of money. So instead of uh, worrying about different types of investing, or starting a business or anything like that, they really focus on their jobs and earning as much as possible, as fast as possible, so that they can reach financial independence as quick as possible. Well, this is definitely a really cool thing. And for some people, it will be amazing. You can earn a lot of money. Uh, it's definitely not necessary. So if you're not a high income earner and you don't have the prospects of earning a lot of income, uh, it, it's not necessary. There's definitely other ways to do it, which I have done myself because I never made much money. Invest in the stock market. This is where you're taking all that money that you're saving and investing it into the stock market and really taking advantage of compound interest. If you can start investing when you're young, you will see amazing rewards later in life. Now, most people who are into fire invest in low cost index funds, things like VTSAX, where it's just very simple. You continually put money in, you're thinking about long term. It might be more volatile day to day, but you're looking at five or 10 or 20 years from now. And if you can do that in tax advantage accounts like Roth IRAs, and if you can do that over a long period of time, you'll be shocked by how much you will start to make from that compound interest and from investing in the market. As an example, just a couple years ago, I invested $800 into VTSAX, and today without ever touching it, it is now $1,300. I've made more than $500 just over the past couple of years without ever having to think about it, worry about it, trade it, anything like that. This just makes it super, super simple. The lazy way. This is uh, kind of what I have done. I've done a couple of these kind of cobbled together. So hopefully you can do the same thing and see what's gonna work right for you. But this is the idea of cutting down your expenses a lot. You can do things like by living somewhere cheaper or having an older or no car, maybe doing geo arbitrage and moving to a country that's cheaper. And then maybe start a small business that just makes uh, enough money for you to survive on or you work maybe one or two weeks a month doing a part-time job or whatever side projects so that because your expenses are really low, you don't have to make all that much money. And that might be the more van life, fastest way to freedom without actually having a ton of money saved up or having to build a lot of passive income. You can do this in a couple years and just kind of live that more uh, nomadic lifestyle. If you guys want to hear more on this topic, you can check out my podcast, Finances Unfiltered, or join the membership of this channel for just three bucks a month. I'm adding a lot more financial content over there. So hopefully it can help you guys out. Thank you again to NerdWallet for sponsoring this video, and I'll see you next week.